Do you enjoy interactive author chats? Then welcome to Story Behind the Story where Reese Ryan, where romance authors and readers connect. I'm Reese Ryan, author of sexy, emotional, grown folks fiction, <laughs> featuring lots of family drama, surprising secrets, and a cast of complicated, sometimes messy characters. And my guest this week is Denise N. Wheatley, who writes in a variety of subgenres of romance. So we're going to be talking to her about why she enjoys writing in these multiple subgenres. We're going to be talking about her a West Coast crime uh, story series, as well as talking about, she's going to share with us her tips for writing thrillers to keep you turning a page, as well as recommending some books by romantic thriller authors that we should be reading right now. So thank you for joining us today. If you are joining us from Facebook, um, welcome. Well, you need to, it's a very interactive show and you can, you know, have, we have, allow you to comment and uh, ask questions and stuff. And we'll try to get you your questions as we can throughout the show. However, if you are coming to us from Facebook, if you have not done it before, you will need to give Facebook permission to see or uh, give StreamYard permission to see your Facebook uh, profile as well as your name so that you can be a part of the discussion. So, uh, as I was saying, Denise is going to be our guest. We're going to get to her in just a minute. And if you're coming to me from my newsletter list, I'm glad you're able to join us live. After the show, I'm going to hit your with a reminder because there have, was a ton of information in that newsletter. A lot of stuff's happening. Um, I often get asked if I have audiobooks. And an audiobook came out today, and that's the Valentine, a Valentine for Christmas that came out on audiobook today. And I think last week, a cowboy kind of thing came out on audiobook. So those two books are available for audiobooks. If you're a member of my newsletter list, you'll see that and be able to see the links there uh, in the newsletter. And then this Friday on March the 24th at 7 p.m. here in Raleigh, North Carolina, I'll be attending a romance event and book signing at Quill Ridge Books with Annie Rains, who had a recent release, as well as author Nancy Nagel. So we'll be there. It's a free event. If you haven't been to Quill Ridge Books in a long time, you'll want to come there because I haven't been there in many years. And when I looked it up, I couldn't believe at the new, beautiful, gorgeous store that they have now. So you absolutely want to join us if you're local. Uh, we'd love to see you. So um, I think that pretty much covers everything. Like I said, if you're on Facebook, don't forget to hit that link at the bottom of the description so we'll be able to see who you are. And we're going to get right into it and chat with Denise because I have so many questions for her. <laughs> so hello, Denise, and thank hello, you so much for joining Reese. us. Thank you for having me. How are you? I am good. Thank you. I'm really glad to have you here. Oh, and you know, I love you and I love your books. So I'm excited to have you chat with us. So first of all, everybody probably does already know who you are, <laughs> but in case they do not, can you tell Rhea, I'd never like to read bios on this show. I like to have people give us a little bit of who they are. So tell us a little bit about who you are and what it is that you write. Okay, so my name is Denise N. Wheatley. I was born and raised in Chicago. I always tell people I come from a family of readers, my father being the nonfiction, mom being fiction, so I took after my mother. And uh, always been a lover of books. I used to cry when I was a kid before I learned how to read. So I've just always loved the written word. And um, it was my senior year of college when I decided to take my first stab at writing a book. So all throughout school, I would write my little poems and short stories and whatnot. And Terry McMillan was my biggest inspiration. Started writing my first story after, uh, first book after college. And um, the first book was published by Simon & Schuster in 2004, I Wish I Never Met You. And I've been writing and ghost writing ever since. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. And I didn't know you did ghost writing too. So oh, yeah, that was my, so my next question was, how did you get started? as a romance writer. You told us who your inspirations were and mm -hmm. you know that you've been reading since you were little. So how did you get started writing romance? 
So I have to tell you as a kid, so you know this about me, Reese, I was always sneaking my mother's books. So Jackie Collins, Danielle Steele, Sidney Sheldon, those were Stephen King, even though that terrified me. But those were the books that I started reading at a very young age. No business doing it, but I did. And so I just got acclimated to the romance world and fell in love with it back then. So it stayed with me. And then through my English classes in school, I have a degree in writing. I just decided, you know, what, I'm going to go for it and see if I can do this, too. And again, it was Terry McMillan where I saw myself in some of her books. And I thought, OK, I, I might be able to do this. So that's how I got my start. I think just the education, my mother, who was so confident. I had a lot of people laugh at me and say, oh, write a book, please. Yeah. My father did one of them. Yeah. People didn't believe that I could actually do it. So I was so excited to have pulled it off. So I love that. I yeah. love that. Yeah. Yes. My, my new philosophy in life is like I'm taking the Beyonce philosophy where she said, you always stay gracious. Your best revenge is your paper. So right. <laughs> being yeah. able to do that thing that everybody thought you couldn't do. Yep. That can be, you can use that as fuel. You know, you can either, yeah. you, you can either let something like that tear you down or you can use it as fuel. So I love seeing people use that as, as fuel. So Absolutely. good for you. Good for you. So let's get into what you write. My goodness, you, okay. So you already, you write contemporary, right? Mm -hmm. And then you're writing these romantic suspense and these thrillers and stuff. And recently it was announced that you'll be writing for Harlequin Medical, which a lot of people here might not even know that Harlequin has medical uh, romances. So tell us how, why it is that you were drawn to writing in these different subgenres instead of like focusing on, on one. What do you enjoy about writing in multiple subgenres of romance? So writing multiple genres is interesting because you don't get bored and you don't burn out on one thing. Contemporary was where I started, kind of leaning more towards women fiction, women's fiction. I Wish Never Met You is a bit of a, I would call it more of a dark rock comedy. A lot of jokes in that book, but it's, you know, that book was, I got to go beside myself writing that one. It was a little bit, you know, the cursing and whatnot. That's okay, though. We'll save that topic for later. But anyway... I think with the romantic suspense, I got interested in that because I, in my free time, I was watching true crime nonstop. I still do. That's all I watch. That's wow. why I'm so annoyed. I love true crime. And so in writing the romance, I would take a break from it, watch all these shows, listen to the podcast. And I finally say, you know, it would be nice if I could merge these two and find a way to bring both of these interests together. And then that's when it dawned on me. And, you know, again, growing up, I was reading Sidney Sheldon, not knowing a lot of his books were romantic suspense because it didn't really mm. have for me back then. Yes. I mean, so many stories have a romance in them, right? They, they might not be romance, but they might yep. they probably have some kind of love story or whatever. Right. Part of it. So that's interesting. Right. And even Jackie Collins, you know, she wrote um, a lot of about the mafia in her book. So there was a lot of suspense there too, but of course she had the romance weaved in throughout. So being able to merge those two has brought me so much joy <clears throat> because again, it's two of my main interests coming together as one. And then, so with the medical... So it's it's kind of a sad story, but kind of not. So my father passed away in 2010 and he was really sick, lung cancer, congestive heart failure. And I was his caregiver. And I really developed a close relationship with a lot of his doctors and the nurses. Then my mom fell ill in 2018. So I was helping. I still take care of her. And in that, I started to see I got so close to the medical field. I studied everything. I did my own research on everything, all the medications they were on, procedures they'd have to get. So in that, I figured, well, this is kind of like a new interest. I'm always looking for, you know, different solutions to illness and natural things as well. So I kind of started to incorporate that, too. And that's been a nice break from the suspense, because I tell you, Reese, I told my editor, I am tired of killing people <laughs> got to find an outlet. I'll always have that in my heart and we'll come back to it. But in the meantime, <clears throat> excuse me, let me get into another form of writing that will kind of give me a little bit of a break. So yeah. medical has been perfect for that. And that's required a lot of research too. So now look, I think I'm a doctor, forensic <laughs> scientist, florist. I have so many occupations in my mind. <laughs> that is the thing. Like every time I pick, you know, a career from my one of my characters, I'm like, oh, this will be really interesting to have, you have this career or whatever. And then you realize, okay, I have to know stuff about this career. And you got to mm -hmm. do all this research. And yep. I, you know, so many times, I don't know about you, but I and I, I find myself doing all this research or whatever for like a throwaway line. It's literally yes. like one line. Yep. It's just like, <laughs> but I need to be accurate yes. about what I'm saying. And so, yep. you know, so that, that drives me crazy. So I can just imagine with the medical. That's that's one of the yeah. things. Like there's certain 
areas like and for me even though I read romance almost exclusively, you know, I, I do read some other stuff, but you know, it's, it's mostly romance or romance adjacent. Let me put it that way. Mm-hmm. Um, but as far as what I watch, we almost exclusively watch murder mysteries. I'm not a true crime person, okay. I, but we watch a lot, a lot of murder mysteries. I watch cozy mysteries as well as procedurals and stuff. And like, I have been wanting forever to get into uh, to write a romantic thriller or a romantic suspense because I'm like I watch yeah. this stuff all the time but I'm always like a little bit terrified about having to do all the research and stuff oh, yeah. <laughs> those about. deep dives are intense they're intense yeah yeah I can imagine <laughs> I can imagine so let's get into talking about one of your romantic thrillers so tell us a little bit about your most recent release backcountry cover up and what inspired the story Okay, so again, I'm from Chicago. So, you know, we're like the home of pyramid schemes, right? (laughs) So I don't know if you've got those friends who've always tried to get you involved in those pyramid schemes and, you know, the the quick money uh, opportunities. So I think, you know, so many of those we've seen over the years. And I thought, you know, that would be something nice to incorporate because I know a lot about it. And then just to kind of bring in those other elements, making it about murder. I'm in a sorority. So then uh, adding a women's group element to it, an upscale women's group and incorporating the shadiness that could kind of come into play with that. These fake friendships, these people who aren't who they say they are. Yes. And then, and you know how it is, money, you know, money can all, oftentimes lead to murder. So I think sure. I was <laughs> inspired. Well, so you know that watching your murder mysteries, that's always the sex and money. Yep. One of these two things are usually at the, the base of it. Yep. So I think those two things, are that's what started the story. And then as I wrote, I came up with new ideas. I don't know if you do this. While you write, you come up with new plot lines. Of course. Yep. <laughs> so like, this wasn't in the proposal. I hope, I hope this can still, you know, happen. I mean, I, cha- I totally changed the character, made her an undercover something. I don't want to give anything away, but... I just had so much fun doing it, but it made sense for someone in law enforcement to infiltrate this group and figure out what's really going on. So that one was a lot of fun to write. I really enjoyed it. All those twists and turns I was able to add. And I love when readers say at the end, I never thought that person was the killer. That's my favorite. Oh, yeah, I, I, love I love that. See, that, see, that's great. Because that is one thing that I find is because I watch so many murder mysteries. Yep. Like sometimes it'll come, it'll be, it'll be a good show. It's not even that the show's not good. It's not that the show wasn't well done, but like I'll be watching it. And as soon as this particular person comes, I'm like, she did it. Yeah. <laughs> she did it. She did it. And, and like 90% of the time I'm right. But that's because like, again, I've been watching, like I've been married for 34 years and oh, my wow. husband introduced me to murder mysteries back in it. So I've been watching them for 34 years. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so, <laughs> I'll see you're a pro. It, you know? Yeah. So yeah, so that's it. So that's quite a compliment if they're like, okay, this is I never thought it was that person. And that always excites me as a reader or a viewer. Yeah. When it turns out to be the suspect like I never imagined yeah. who that who it was. That's exciting to me. Because readers are so smart. Readers are smart. They can figure anything out. So I'm always striving to come up with a plot line that they're not going to figure out. So I always try and weave in so many different twists and turns just to get them get their heads in a lot of different directions. So because I never make it the obvious person. I try not to do that. Yeah. 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 That that is one thing. Like a lot of times, I'll, there's something I'll come. I'm like, you know, that's too easy. It's just too easy for that to be that, that person. <laughs> right. Yeah. It's always cool when it's that person you kind of and when it's that person you kind of forgot about, you know, they popped up and you're like, hmm, nah. <laughs> they have they have no reason to do this, but yeah. And then, oh yeah, they did. <laughs> yeah. So tell us about your series, a West Coast Crime Story. Okay, so anybody who knows me, they know I love California. I'm like a Los Angeles junkie. That's my favorite city in the world. So. Having a story, and Clemington, California is actually fictional because I love making up fictional towns, but my character did. Yeah, I love that. But my uh, main character in the first book, The Heart Shaped Murder, she did work for the LAPD before coming back home uh, because there was a serial killer after her that she was on the cusp of uh, capturing. So, but overall, that series is about the Love family. So it's a family of law enforcement officers. We've got the father, Kennedy Love, who's the chief of police in Clemington. And then his children, that's the children kind of spread out through the series, Lena Love, Miles Love, and Jake, Jake Love. So um, book one, 
serial killer. I love writing these serial killers. Book two is a serial killer. Well, I might as well say all of them, but <laughs> it's all related to something involving this family. So that I just finished the third book in the series, Homicide at Vincent Vineyard. That series was a pleasure to write, just uh, following the stories of all three uh, main characters, see the siblings, seeing them find love, seeing them help one another as they capture these killers. And that was a great one. So I, I really enjoyed it. I, it's so fun being able to create these different characters. And, and like you said, I also like to create my towns because that way you don't have anybody coming to say, you know, that bakery has not been there for five years. <laughs> You know right. That's right. <laughs> it is where I said it is. Uh -huh. <laughs> I love it. So I was going to take a moment to uh, say hello to folks who are joining us. So uh, thank you so much for all of you for, for coming and spending some time with us. Cheryl Brooks, Amy Jo Cousins, who says Chicago, Hi. Uh, Veronica Lockett. Thank you for being here uh, with us. And Rena says, now I have to go and find your books tonight. Thank you. We love Raina. that. <laughs> Thank you. And Veronica said, Backcountry cover up was awesome. Read it and loved it. Thank you, Veronica. And so I, I, Cheryl has a great question, which I think I'm going to wait until a little bit later because I just want to make sure that we don't. Um, that you're not going to cover that in this next question I'm going to ask you. Okay. Um, and then author Rhonda McKnight. Hi, Rhonda. So, hey. <laughs> so, okay, I'm going so to put a bookmark mm -hmm. on Cheryl's question and then come back to that if you want okay. to answer in this. So, what are five tips that you would offer to someone who is interested, someone like me, who is <laughs> interested in writing a thriller or a procedural? What are your five tips that you would offer? Now, Reese, you know I've got a thousand tips. I, I can get into this all day, but I did choose five main ones that I think really help build a good suspense story. I think the first thing, and I always keep readers in mind when I when I think of these ideas. But the first one is coming up with a thrilling plot, because I don't know if you noticed. For those who love to watch these types of shows on television, nine one one, and do you notice how the plots are becoming just more and more outlandish? They're they're coming with so many different creative ways, but the way to sum up was like one of my favorite shows. For yes. <laughs> and in the beginning, they something crazy happens. I love that. And that's that's what I try and do. Coming up with this thrilling plot and then starting your book off with some big action scene that's going to really bring the readers in off top. So I think opening with a really exciting scene and then having this plot that's got a lot of twists and turns or red herring. So with me, I love writing serial killers who aren't just killing people, but they have some type of sinister modus operandi they're you know there's they have a signature carving yeah. a number on somebody's chest and things like that um i love doing doing those types of stories so i think that's the start come up with a great plot try and do something nobody's done before just put a twist on something that might be a little bit common so once you come up with that thrilling plot i think next coming up with really compelling characters mm. so you know, I love second chance romance. So I think second chance is awesome when you've got two characters who already know one another in some way, whether they work together in the past, they were involved with one another in the past. Um, I love a detective who's burnt out. So he left a big city, moves to a small town, thinking he's going to just kind of lay back and arrest people for stealing soda from the gas station. And then he, <laughs> he gets hit with this huge, that was by you Christmas disappearance. He got hit with this huge kidnapping case he didn't expect. So he's exhausted, but he's trying to, you know, get to the bottom of the case because, of course, it's assigned to him. Then you've got this heroine in the book who's a reporter. It's her best friend who's gone missing. So she comes and totally disrupts his investigation. They're cl clashing with one another. So there you've got these two characters. They have some some type of background that connects them to the case. And then they're clashing with one another to, you know, as they both have the same goal in yeah, mind. That definitely adds another layer to it. Yeah. I love that. So I think coming up with good characters that have some layers and ba a good background is important. So we talked about this one, my third one, do your research. You got to do your research because again, I've got police officers reading my books, attorneys, and thank goodness they, they've all said, you know, you were really on point. You knew your stuff with this, but I always do my research. So, um, you know, I wrote about a forensic scientist. And with that, it's so intricate because I talked about going into the lab and running blood through the machine, DNA, things like that. So doing your research, 
being precise and exact on the facts you're putting into a book. I think that's very important. Uh, my fourth one will be pacing. I think pacing is really important in a suspense book because once you start to build some momentum, you don't ever want to bring it back down. Mm -hmm. So as the book goes on, you know, you might want to start off with things slowly progressing. But once you get to a really high point in the middle toward the end of the book, don't you don't want to bring readers back down. So you want to kind of pace it at a nice spot. So you won't be toward the end of the book. And then you're kind of like, OK, now, wait a minute. I hit all my high notes. And, you know, it's like a song. And you wait till the end to hit all those good high notes and <laughs> end it with a bang. You know, what did Heavy D say? Started with a pow and ended with a bang. I love yeah. it. <laughs> how you want to do it. You want to be able to end with the bang. So pacing the book appropriately, I think is important too, to keep the readers on the edge of their seats. And then lastly, if you're writing a romantic suspense, I think it's important to keep a good balance between the romance and the suspense. You want to be careful not to have those moments of, um, of excitement or attraction happening in a scene where there might be uh, something tragic happening. You know, your characters are not going to start making out at a crime scene. Yeah. So, <laughs> that kind of does drive me crazy with like a lot of action movies and stuff. I'm like, really? Right now? Not right now. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. So there's so many down moments. And I think that's a good time for you to incorporate some of that chemistry between your characters over dinner, over coffee, if they're in the evidence room. So those more quiet moments where there's some dialogue, you can show the chemistry there. Or if you want to incorporate it into an action scene, um, maybe it's them showing care for one another, you know, trying to save the other from imminent danger. So I think it's a it's a fine line that you walk, but keeping the balance, making sure there's a lot of excitement happening and then keeping the romance and the chemistry there as well is important. And for intrigue, we're not those are pretty low heat books. So there's yeah. not going to be a lot of steam, but you have to find a way because we it's still Harlequin and Harlequin readers want some romance. So you have to kind of find a way to incorporate it and still keep that suspense uh, in the forefront as well. Yeah. And. With Harlequin, there they have the two different lines: it's romantic suspense and then intrigue. And right. with romantic suspense, I think it's seventy percent the relationship, and like thirty percent is the, the uh, you know mystery or whatever. Right. And with intrigue is like the opposite. It's right. Seventy like percent the the intrigue or whatever that's going on, like thirty percent yeah. romance, and not high heat, not a lot of you know language and stuff like that. So right. That's for anybody too who might be considering writing uh, romantic suspense for either one of those lines. That's the difference in the, yeah in those, in those yeah. two. So, um, for me personally, like I am more drawn to the romantic suspense line as far as a, as being a writer because I you know I can go with a little heavier heat and I can go with yeah. a, <laughs> a little bit saucier language and yeah, yeah. And all and don't have to focus as much on the stuff that I'm a little concerned about like the procedural yeah. and all that kind of stuff right but intrigue is where it's at in terms of the sales in terms of it being available everywhere mm -hmm. and all of that yeah so that is something to keep in mind as well yeah. so. intrigue is definitely more gritty it's black ops it's serious murder it is just you know but you're right the language can't can't be there Again, low the steam is a little bit lower, but it's high on the high on the grit because I'm yeah, high on the grit. <laughs> <laughs> so you mentioned so many great um points. You talked about that plot that's exciting, and and you mentioned a, that's a great example that you mentioned nine one one. It's not necessarily a, a a mystery show, but it's like you know, but it, it has all of these you know um those scenarios first responders first yeah. responders but this that show is wild it is wild 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 with like yeah. the different stuff that happens and they're also very good at that show of like the endings of getting you hooked yeah into the next show with their endings yes. i i love that show so much i love the character the depth of the characters are like yeah. i love damaged characters yeah and so they have plenty of those and you yeah. get to delve into all of their different issues and stuff and so, yeah, that's a great job. And then you talked about characters mm -hmm. and that's so important. I, uh, two of the shows I just really, really love um, what they've done with the characters in terms of um, like a mystery show is the show, one of the shows I always look at for character development is um, Elementary. And that was uh, CBS's version of Sherlock Holmes where they had mm -hmm. uh, Johnny Lee Miller and um, Watson was a woman. It was Lucy Lu And yeah. their character development was so good. Like he could do the smallest things and you 
having to follow the show knew how how big that was for him, like as far as his growth as a, as a character yeah. and the way they work together and stuff. So I'll explain like that. But this new show, Will Trent, which is also based off of a series of uh, novels as well. Um, it is amazing. The characters are amazing. And I, you know, I kind of love these broken characters and you got this, like you said, you, there's the mystery happening and then there's, you know, whether it's some kind of history or clash or whatever between the characters that always makes it so much more exciting. So yeah. that show is a great example of that. So I love it. I love it. I love it. <laughs> That's exciting to me. So I love all of these fantastic tips that you give, given us and like pacing and, the balance and all that kind of stuff. So excellent tips. So Did we answer Cheryl's question in that. Oh, uh, you know what? No, and I'm glad you mentioned that because I was okay. going to ask the next question. But let me make sure. Yeah. So before we get to our Rex, then yes. Um, let me go back to her question. Let me find it. Okay, there we go. So. The question is, do you put in red herrings? I sure do, Cheryl. I love a good red herring. So basically, if people haven't heard of that, a red herring is some type of clue or hint that you throw into a book just to kind of lead readers astray, where they think it's a clue that's going to help them solve the case, but actually you're throwing them off the trail of the truth. I yeah. love that. Again, with the twists, with the turns, I think red herrings are so important to make a good thriller, good romantic suspense. They're so much fun. And then when you weave everything together and the plot comes together in the end, you realize something you read in chapter two was resolved in chapter 22. It's like, oh, that's, it's just so exciting, you know, yeah. as a reader and even yeah. as a writer, cause I've put stuff in books and I forgot about it. And I go back, I'm like, oh my goodness, I can't, <laughs> you know, how did I think of that? But you know, you know this as a writer, you get into these moments you get something comes over, you put something in the book, you step away, you come back. You're like, did I write that? I know, right? And you go, I, I, I go back all the time. I'm like, did I, I wrote that? Oh, yes. Good. Yeah. <laughs> we, we black out when we write, right? We're blacking out because we are just in a zone. Yes. We just Probably like, you just go where the characters lead you, right? That's right. That's absolutely that, right. That's why a lot of times, like you were just saying about how just the story changed from the proposal. Yes. I feel like a lot of times my proposal are just a suggestion, a mild yeah. suggestion, because yeah. we're going to, like, it's a, I, and I do, I have found that I need that foundation, Yeah, but I'm going to go wherever the characters take me. Absolutely. And, you know, so sometimes, you know, something will happen, and, like, I remember I did, a, <laughs> this is not Thriller, but I did a proposal, well, I did the proposal for, um, I'm not going to say the book, but I did a proposal <laughs> for a certain book, and there was uh, something that happened. Let me, I, I don't want to give away some. So there was something that happened in that book. Mm -hmm. And the editors were like, hey, that's great. But could you make it happen in like in the first third of the story? Mm -hmm. I'm like, sure. Well, when I started writing the story, that's just not how it worked out. It worked out the way I had originally planned it. Yeah. And so it happened near the end of the story. Yeah. That's it. <laughs> so, Did they even remember that they made that suggestion? Nobody said anything else to me about it. And I'm glad they didn't because yeah. the way it worked out was perfect. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> if I had tried to flip it, you know, I would have been forced in the situation. And that's yeah. just not how that story and those characters, that's just not how it worked out for them. So I'm glad that that's the way it went but sometimes it's the opposite sometimes yeah. i have all these elaborate plans and stuff all this stuff that's gonna happen and like maybe i just can't get to all of it you Absolutely. Know, because category is only 50k right so right. i'm always overwriting my books and having yeah. it go back and cut stuff out yep so some of it just might not make the final cut or sometimes something happens earlier in the book that totally diverts the situation and yes so, but those are some of the most exciting moments for yes. me as a author yeah and it, gives you the best twists and turns and stuff and oh, you know yeah. the story i'm like i know i did that was gonna happen you know <laughs> yeah. how many times have you worked on a book and and been like okay let me see if i can get away with this i will write things and no i shouldn't put it in that book but i do it anyway praying i get away with it and i'll be getting away with it i, I mean, cannot tell you how many times i've done that <laughs> <laughs> yes i'm like no i know this wasn't in the proposal i didn't discuss this with anybody I'm putting it in anyway. Let's see if I get away with it. And I, I have definitely done that lots of times. And for anybody who's read Waking Up Married, yeah. Yeah. What happens in that book in terms of like what happens in Vegas as far as how they ended yeah. up waking up married? I did not think they were going to let me get away with that. Yeah. Yep. So, <laughs> so. And you know what? I got to say, I, I get a little bit spicier and steamier in every intrigue I write. And I'm like, let me see. 
if I can just if I get away with it. <laughs> right. And I know language, I keep the language down. There's is everything is like closed door, but leading up to that closed door, I'm like, well, let me see how Stevie and Spicy yeah. get away with it. <laughs> I hope my editor is not going to watch this, but I've been getting away with it. <laughs> I love it. I love it. I love it. Yeah. All right. So let me look at a few more comments before we go to our recommendation list. Yes. And Cheryl Brooks, we were talking earlier, said that reminds me of the mystery series, Jesse Stone. I remember that with Tom Selleck, um, originally a book series. And I'm going to tell you so many of these really great mysteries mm -hmm. series and stuff you go and look for it and you know i'm like okay this was a series of books you yes. know whether it's miss yes. fisher's murder, we didn't even Mystery, know. Right. murder in provence yeah um just so many uh, agatha raisin just because i watch yeah. as you can see i watch a lot of british and canadian yeah shows. yeah they're great they're fantastic they're so well done most of them were, were mysteries even on hallmark some of the ones yes. like the one with the baker that's yep. a, a, a that was comes from a, a series of books. Yep, they converted into a TV show. So, uh, romantic, you know, I mean, the cozy mysteries and thrillers and stuff that folks are writing is where it's at because that's where yeah. they're look they're going and finding that content that's yeah. ready, ready to do these TV shows and stuff. So, yeah, um, <laughs> and Pam Kelly says hello from Houston. <laughs> Yes, rate us, chime in about the research. Yep. Yes, that is, yeah. <laughs> and then Cheryl said about the balance, when you talk about the balance between the romance and uh, the elements of the of yep. mystery and stuff, which mm -hmm. we actually going to dive a lot more into next week with my guest, uh, Katie Richards. Oh, yeah. Um, one is, of my favorites. Say it again. Yes, and one of my favorites, yeah. <laughs> So, yes, that is important because it is easy for one to overshadow the other. So yeah. it's finding that right balance is, is great. Um, yeah, Rhonda says, I'm interested in, in intrigue. I love the books. Yeah, I am interested in intrigue as well. It's probably one of the, yeah. So um, it, it's a great line and there's so yeah. many fantastic authors writing for it. So lots of excitement um yeah and then Raina says i had no idea about the difference with harlequin i need to pick up uh this up more often yeah so yeah that's that was the interesting thing to me like i said when i started looking at it because i i have forever been wanting to write a romantic thriller but it's just like i've been so busy and constantly yeah. you know on and going over and over having all these books having all these deadlines so that i have not really been able to do anything so i've been like sitting on a few story ideas that I really, really want to do for maybe at this point, like maybe seven years. Oh, wow. You know, so I was like, I, I need to find the time to do that. So, okay. Um, okay. So Rhonda has a great question. Did Denise study any books or take any particular online classes that helped her with learning the mystery writing craft? You know, the best way to learn for me is to read the types of books that you want to write. So that was a big one. I read a lot of craft books. Uh, Forensics for Dummies is one that I've read. I do a lot of research online. So that's always helpful. But yeah, reading mysteries. I read a lot of intrigues. I love that intrigue line. Um, and you know, with the shows that I watch, you learn so much because I'm watching the real shows, the Datelines, 48 Hour Mystery, Forensic Files, um, the Cold Case shows. I learned so much from those. Those are real life detectives. First 48 is another great one. The the cast, um, well, the, the department in Memphis, they were fantastic. Sergeant Caroline Mason, I love her so much. She was in Memphis. I just learned so much from watching real cases get solved. So that's really where I came up with, um, that's where I get a lot of my inspiration, a lot of ideas, and where I learned a lot of the ins and outs of how it all works. But I think having those craft books, uh, doing a lot of research online, because everything is online. There's so much you can find online. And I find I've done deep dives for medical and intrigue just just on websites. It is all there. So everything. Yeah. Else, you know. It's amazing you, what you can learn these days. Like, like when you yes. look up almost anything on YouTube, right? Oh, yeah. you can <laughs> perform surgery. I can I can perform surgery at this point. <laughs> I've watched so many YouTube videos. So, yeah. Yeah. Really and, on there, you know, uh, giving examples of how things work in an ER. And so it's fantastic. And, and that's a great suggestion, like I said, because I, like I said, I'm, I'm more into the mysteries. I'm not a true crime person, but yeah. if you're going to write 
some a procedural especially yeah um or anything like that it makes sense to mm -hmm. to start to delve into that and i could just imagine it's a treasure trove of like ideas and inspiration yeah um for storylines and characters and all that stuff watching that and you know paying attention to the news and stuff oh, and yeah. stories that come up and can can give you ideas and stuff so wow that makes a lot of sense. And you, you know what? Like, You're you gonna make me have to write watch some true crime. Go watch <laughs> true crime, Reese. I'm gonna make you. And you know, me being in Chicago, we have so many unsolved murders here. You should hear me watching the news. I'm like, oh. wait a minute. I know there was some fingerprints. And I have a, a in real life, there's a soror of mine. I'm an AK, and she was beaten to death in her home. Her name is um Aaliyah Newell. She was bound and beaten to death in her home. Her case has not been solved. I think she passed over a year ago. I am mm. so angry. And I'm just, yeah. you know, so you should hear me run rattle yeah. off all of my, you know, my forensic stuff. And I'm like, I, I need to get the chief of police on the phone. This case should have been solved. It, it's yeah. it's really unfortunate. But we know what happened. They they delved so deep into the whole Jesse Smollett situation, right? They figured that out. But yet we've got all these deaths. And, you know, we don't know who's killed so many of these people in the city. It is so upsetting. It is, it is very upsetting. It, so, um, <laughs> uh, Cheryl says, I agree. Real, Will Trent is good. The alienness is also a good suspenseful period. Series. I've, I've heard that one and I haven't seen that one yet. So, um, yeah, so that's, that. I have to look that up. And then Raina asked, wait, so you have rules to write for Harlequin? <laughs> oh, yeah. oh, honey, yes. <laughs> Let me tell you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, because it, it, every every line, like, especially with the categories and stuff, different imprints, they have their own kind of promise the imprint does or their own kind of rules or whatever. For instance, Kamani, both Kamani and Desire that I wrote for, both have this kind of thing with wealth, right? So I'm actually a person, I love writing about regular people. That's why my rich people come off as regular people because I really want to write regular people. Yeah. <laughs> so even though they have to be wealthy and in a wealthy world and that gives them this additional agency or whatever, I always try to make them come off as regular people. So as a matter of fact, a librarian said what uh she said what i write is chillionaires because they're like billionaires but they're chill and they they're, they yeah. come off like regular people and so <laughs> but yeah so each different line has their own kind of you know required required yeah. rules so yeah. of course love inspired is not gonna have a whole lot of language they're not gonna have on the page sex you know so it's right. just every line is different is different yeah you know, whether it's special edition you know it's gonna have a a, a set of you know kind of parameters for, right. their, for their thing. They're more family, and, their friends, their community. Yeah. Right. So it, it, it depends on what line you're writing for. And that That's what separates the imprints. And right. so re the readers of those imprints know what they're going to get. Mm -hmm. So when it comes to something like that. So yeah, more so than like a, a bigger imprint that just has all kind of different books that might be wildly different from each other. You have those similarities. So there's that familiarity. Um, wow. within within the different lines so yes so i hope that answers that <laughs> and rodna said i love british tv honey i love brit i love the bbc show so much brit box yeah. is my thing yeah and acorn, I, you watch acorn. acorn yeah i watch acorn yeah. but we i used to have acorn and brit box i might still have have them both but we watch way more brit box, brit than box acorn okay. But I love them both, and mm -hmm. I also love Canadian shows. So, like the Murdoch mm -hmm. Mysteries, which is a period drama that's so fun because they often bring in real life characters like Ford or Tesla, and just like all these, you know, cool different things in history. So that's super interesting. Um, but yeah, so I but I love 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 the British shows. I watch like Father Brown, Dag of the mm -hmm. Raisin. You know, just an Australian show to watch some of those too, oh, like okay. Miss, Miss Fisher's Mur Murder Mysteries or whatever. So yeah, those are fun. Those are a lot of fun. Yeah. Uh, Ren says I love cozy mysteries. Yep, and Hallmark has a tons of those. Yep, with the different ones. Um, only thing is, and I will say that they definitely have gotten better, and and like they have the mahogany line, so they have more whatever. But um, you know, that's the only thing I was like with the Hallmark for the longest. I'm like. But dude, it's like the same four or five folks over and over in all the movies, you know, like they're great. But yeah. there's so many people out there. 
<laughs> so. How nice was it that Tony Braxton had that one cozy mystery where she had the book club? Did you see that one? I, that don't know. I didn't see that one. Oh yeah, Tony Braxton. I mean, it was it on Hallmark or was it on another channel? It was on Hallmark. Okay. I think it was in movies and mysteries. But yeah, Tony okay. Braxton had a show. It was Holly Robinson Pete has 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 Hallmark. yes, yes. And now did she that. have one with Rick Fox at yeah, one point? It was her and Rick Fox. It was yeah, her Rick Fox. I love yeah. that. Yeah. I'm looking for the, the latest one because I ain't seen one in a minute, but yeah, I love those. And the other thing I wish they would do more of is I think they had one where it was a male, the man was the the uh amateur. Oh, okay. And the woman was was the was the cop, like and um, because most of them is always the man is is the police officer, and right. the woman is the the amateur. So they had flipped it on this one where he was a chef, mm -hmm. and I haven't seen one of those in a long time. I don't know if they're still doing them, but I like that, and I would like to definitely see more variety. You yeah, know? yeah, that would be cool. <laughs> that would be cool. So, but yeah, they're fun to watch, and, yeah. and I watch so many of them. And uh, yeah, you know what? I actually got into a little bit. Have you watched Monk? Have you? Did you watch that? I did watch Monk. <laughs> you know, Monk was it, it's 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 so cozy. It's funny. It's entertaining. I that one kind of stole my heart a little bit. So I wa I watched the, all the uh, most. I think I seen I saw most of, of okay. Monk. And yeah. so I did like it, and I I do like it. He just after a while he got on my nerve, and I, I think the reason he got on my nerve so much is because I just didn't like how he treated Natalie. Yeah, and I, I understand all of his little quirks his and all that, and yeah. I get that, and that's cool. That's that's I like that they had the representation of somebody who you know had these kind of quirks. I just didn't like how he treated Natalie, and that yeah. just drove me nuts. So. Yeah, yeah. So, but yeah, yeah, but it is a good show. The mysteries were always mm -hmm. good mm -hmm. um, on it, and you know, <laughs> and I also thought at some point it became more about the shtick of him mm -hmm. than the show. But yeah. the earlier um, seasons, for sure, are really, mm -hmm. really good. Like, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So I totally, I, I totally agree on that. Yeah. Um. Oh, and Rhonda said she didn't think about TV shows. So thanks for the suggestion. Oh yeah. Yes. Okay. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I agree. Uzu. There's so much stuff online. It is definitely rabbit hole territory. I can't tell you how many times I went to research something for whatever reason and got completely lost okay. <laughs> so you do have to watch that for sure and hey mia hi mia. <laughs> so yes all the true crime all the true crime lots of inspiration and we were talking about the rule, rules with harlequin and and ronda said many rules yeah. <laughs> oh cool oh and Brenda said I, 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 I'm thinking she's referring to you, Denise. Did she no, she I'm thinking she's referring to you, but... Okay. So we'll say say thank you for somebody, <laughs> either one, we're going to say thank you. For yeah. <laughs> we appreciate it so much. Yeah. And Rhonda said, hi, my billionaires are down to earth, too. Yeah, I love that. I'm like, that's my, that's my way of, like, skirting the system. I'm always trying to be a rebel, so... <laughs> Yeah, I like that. Yeah, I, I said the same thing when she said it. And I'm I'm so glad I remembered the phrase because I couldn't remember what the phrase was because it was like three or four years ago that she said it. And when I thought of it again, I'm like, I love that chili there. That's just like, perfect. yeah, that's absolutely perfect. So um, Cheryl says yes to BritBox. Check out Vera. I've had a lot of recommendations for Vera. I've got to watch that right now. We're watching, we watched Death in Paradise I oh think, yeah, I think this is the final year for it. Yeah, but there's a show that's a spinoff of it. Humphrey was one of the DIs on Beyond um, Death, Death in Paradise, and now he has his own show called Beyond Paradise. So I had just started watching that first one. Okay, yeah, um, and I'm assuming Rhonda's talking about um, Hallmark in terms of getting better, and I do agree that in period there's been a lot more diversity, especially like. Yeah more with, with the holiday shows and stuff oh, for yeah. sure mm -hmm. but and other shows but i would also like to see the more of that in cozy mystery like i said we got right. holly robinson and pete representing for us thank you holly but <laughs> i definitely want to see tony braxton we got tony braxton yeah and i gotta i gotta catch that one because i did not see oh, yeah. her with a mystery there's another one too that was a mystery and i don't remember the character's name uh the actress's name mm -hmm. but if you watch swat she plays Hondo's girlfriend that's pregnant right now. And she was also in that Tyler Perry movie 
with Blair Underwood that she was the one Blair Underwood was seeing and 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 roughing up. Oh she yeah, had a show where I she like was a mystery show. Yeah. yeah. I like I can't think of that. I can't think of the name of the show. Rachel Rochelle. I, I know who you're talking about. The real well, it's Rochelle something because that's right. Okay. I used her, she was my example, like inspiration cover character inspiration. Yeah, yes. Yeah. So, I uh, her name is Rochelle. Mine too, at one point, she's beautiful. Yeah, she is gorgeous. Yeah, yes. And Raina says, Yes, I'm so glad it's getting much better. I agree. Yeah, I, and like I love seeing uh, Carolyn Hector is really good if you were into holiday movies and stuff every year. She like gives you all the list of all the holiday movies and stuff and seeing how much more diverse they are yeah. now is just so exciting for me. So I definitely want to see more of that with the cozy yeah. mysteries too. So yeah. Um, Usa said death of Paris is my fave cozy mystery TV show. Like the mix of British and Car mm -hmm. Caribbean characters. I agree. I, I, I love that. I love yeah. that. Um, okay, so Pam asked me a good question. Do you ever worry that your stories are too common that people have seen it before? And I mean, I guess that's a, that's a question you can ask about anything because the same thing with romance, like, there's so only so many stories in the world or whatever, right? And people feel like it's been done before, but I feel like everybody, no matter what you do, you can put a tw your own twist on it, even when right. you do the continuities and they give you to say, Hey, you yeah. have to write a story about these things. Yep. If five different people write it, it's going to be five different stories, you exactly. know, based on who's writing it. So yeah. how would you answer that about, you know, being worried about people having seen it before? Well, I think that we all as individuals, we have our own voices. We do have our own twist. I think part of being an author, coming up with something creative, a creative way be, to put a twist on something. We've, we've seen so many different serial killer cases. So for me, it's like, okay, what twist can I put on this? One twist I always like to put in my my killers are never random. They're always somehow connected to the case, which those are the true crime stories I'm most interested in watching. So of course, those are the ones I like to write. Why is this person killing so many different people? I think that just makes it more interesting that this one person will have so many different ties to all these different people and a purpose and why the crimes are being committed. So I love that type of twist. And then your, your again, your voice, what you bring to a character. Um, and I think a lot of the interest can come in the characters. How is this certain character bring something different to the story. That always makes a difference as well. So yeah. like you say, in romance, we've seen so much. We've seen the romance to lovers, enemies to lovers, and then all of the different tropes. So many of them have been done, but then when you put your own voice and your own twist on it, it's gonna be a different story. And then Absolutely. we devour romance, right? We're done with one book, we're ready for the next one. So yeah. we don't even care if it's been done before. We want it just like the holiday movies, you know, we watch all of them. And everybody has a bakery that's about to be, you know, uh, get closed because some developer wants to build something or, you know, and we keep watching them because they're all different. They all have that twist that makes it interesting. And because we love the stories, we're just glad that they keep coming. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. Uh, that is that is so true. So true. Yeah. And I, I, there are times when I like worry, OK, is this, does this feel like this? And I'm like, no, the characters are completely different. Yep. The situations are different. And then what you were saying about the villains, that's one of the things I really like. Mm -hmm. Is I like a story where the villain, no matter how awful he might be, I, especially when I feel like when he feels like he has some more noble purpose, right? Yeah. So like I, for anybody who watches like the Marvel Universe or whatever, like the end game right. and with Thanos and stuff. Mm -hmm. I think that's a good example. He yeah. is this, you know, you look at him as this horrible villain who wants to wipe out what is it, a third or a fifth or whatever the, the universe, but he's not doing it just because he's evil. He's not doing it just because he wants to be mean. He feels like the, the earth and the, the universe is in such a bad way. Yeah. That this is the only way that we can allow the earth and the environment and, and all of the planets, whatever, to recover is that there are less people there to to take up all the reasons. So even he has had like some more noble purpose that he was was going for, even though you know he's just this awful, horrible, you know, <laughs> yeah. villain that we want to want to see be defeated. But he had some kind of, and so I I I do like when they have my villains in these different stories. They're just not doing it just to be mean or just because they're crazy or just yeah. picking some random. Um, targets they have right. some kind of some kind of purpose in mind, so they, they feel justified in their actions. Yeah, 
whether they are whether they should be or not. Right. Um, Raina says Monk used to be one of my favorites. Mm -hmm. uh, oh, okay. Oh, Bree. Hey, Bree. How are you? Um, hey, Hallmark Bri. has a genealogy cozy mystery. I'd love to see more of. I feel like they slacked off on their rest. I feel like that too. I was wondering yeah. if it was just me because I feel like we haven't really been seeing them because they used to come like I felt like every Sunday it was a new one. One of the different was it the puzzle maker. Was it the the uh, you know the um, it's so many different ones though. <laughs> they got a royalty oh, Baker, just just yeah. they all these different ones. And so it yeah. used to be like in rotation every Sunday right. with somebody new. And I feel like the same thing. Like I'm not really seeing that much. Yeah. So that's interesting. Um, let me see. <laughs> yeah, so okay, we addressed that. Oh, okay. Thank you, Veronica. Tony Braxton, Fallen Angels, yeah. Murder Club, Heroes, and Felons and Friends to Die for. I don't know how I missed that. No, oh, yeah. To look for that. And Veronica was Rick Fox on that one. I I feel like Rick Fox was on he her. Was on, he was definitely on Holly Holly Robinson. Right. I, I feel like he was on Tony. I might be wrong. I I feel like I saw him. So it was she had some really handsome co-star with her. I thought it was yeah. Rick Fox, but yeah, I'm not sure. Yeah. yeah. Can't go wrong with Rick Fox. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and they thanks Mia. It's oh, Rosie. Yeah. Yeah. It's Itez. It, it mm -hmm. has, I, yeah. That's her name, yes. Yep. And she said she was also, oh my, I can see that her inspiration yeah. for her for in Monopoly. Uh, yeah, yeah. I, I could definitely see that. Um, and that yes, that was the name of it, Veronica. It was Redemption in Cherry Springs for Rochelle. So yeah, I love. I actually really did like that one too. Mm -hmm. And so I'm looking forward to seeing another one of that. Um, and then Brie also said. Hope we see more of that. I definitely do. Uh, let me see. <laughs> That's funny. All the bakeries are at risk. Yes, oh. <laughs> <laughs> every bakery. Yeah, and Uzo agrees with you that the author's unique voice and span in the telling of the story is so key. Yeah. Um, okay, so now let's get into this list of because we had so many comments. I'm trying to keep up with y'all. I'm sorry. <laughs> Oh, okay. This is a good question. Brie asked. <laughs> she said, Denise, oh, have you ever creeped yourself out during writing? And I, I'm, I'm glad she asked that question because when you were saying you love writing serial killers, I'm trying to think of that one British mystery that's been on like for 19 years. It's, oh, it's, I, I can't, I, I can never remember. It's got the creepiest opening music. But like we had gotten into that when we were watching that one. But then we were like, okay. I need a little break because it's like every one episode is a, a serial killer. Because <laughs> they always kill at least three people. Right? That makes you so like a serial killer, right? So, yeah. So she asks, do you ever creep yourself out with your right? <laughs> the better question is, when have I not creeped myself out? When have I not? Here's the thing. I watch true crime all day. I'm watching YouTube true crime, which I absolutely love. There's some great uh, vloggers on YouTube. And then Investigation Discovery Channel or Oxygen. My television is always on that. And it's because it's an addiction. So, and then I write well into the night. I cannot tell you between the 2 a.m. and 4 a.m. hours when I'm up writing, true crime is on the television. And then I start hearing noises. You know what I mean? I'm like, oh, somebody's trying to kill me. Somebody's trying to come into my home and kill me. I have gotten so paranoid, but I won't stop. That's the thing. I won't turn the TV off. I won't stop watching this stuff. I'm still writing in the middle of the night. I've gotten chills, so creeped out. And yet I, I, I keep doing it. So I don't know what the problem is. <laughs> yes, oh my God. Absolutely. Okay. <laughs> okay. So I'm assuming, Cheryl, that this question is for Denise. Um, it, uh, our, and you can let me know if that's correct. If you're talking about in the terms of writing it, because I would, I would, I would think you need to know from the beginning to be able to. Well, we can, we can both answer that one, Reese, because you have an opinion of what you enjoy. You know. Yeah. So I mean, so what? What I mean, what? So I, I'm, a, I'm, I'm assuming she's asking you about as you as a writer. Mm -hmm. you, know. Well, you know what as a fan and as a writer I'll say this I prefer knowing at the end because you do have those shows where they talk about who the killer is from the very beginning but then they go back okay. and so, so how it happened that clarifies right there because I'm like are 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 we talking about as a writer or mm -hmm. as a, a, a viewer or whatever because as a yeah. viewer personally I definitely don't like the ones where they show you the murder in the beginning I don't need one exception 
What's that? There was a show called Motive, which I feel oh, like yeah. it was initially a yeah. Canadian show, and then it mm-hmm. came here. And Motive was interesting because it showed you the murder in the beginning. Yes. But you had to figure out the motive. So you knew who the killer was and you knew who the victim was in the very beginning, but Mm -hmm. all alone, you're trying to figure out the motive. So that's the only, that's the only different one that I would say I was probably different with, but like for the most, and, and and, okay, Columbo, you knew who the murder was from the beginning and the entire thing was never about looking at other people. It was about this cat and mouse game between him and the killer Mm -hmm. and being able to figure. So I guess those are the two exceptions for me. But other than that, I always... For me, as a viewer, I always want to know at the end, what about you? And see, Reese, that's that spin. We talk about how to put a spin on something because we've probably seen so many of the cases that were on Motive, on Columbo, and all these other shows, but that's the spin they put on it. You already know who the killer is. So you don't spend the whole time trying to figure that out. You're trying to figure out why it happened, the ins and outs of how it happened, and how you know what led up to it. So for me, as a viewer and a writer, I prefer to know at the end. When I'm reading something, writing something, watching something, I always enjoy. But some, sometimes it can be interesting to throw that in the mix, knowing in the beginning and then kind of back backtracking. Only sometimes. Uh oh, Reese, what have, what have you seen? <laughs> so I'm, look, look, I'm I'm gonna let you finish. Okay. <laughs> but, <laughs> that's, that's, uh, I totally I totally get that. But I, I was just asking for myself personally okay. as the writer. Yeah. I would think you need to know from the beginning. Oh yeah, you, you do. I, I was, okay. That, that's what I was gonna say. Because yeah, how, yeah. how are you gonna set it up? Yeah. If you don't know who to, because like I, we talked about things happening in a book, like you didn't expect and stuff. I wouldn't right. think that that would be one of the situations in which that. Could yeah. <laughs> like if you don't know who it is, how are you gonna do the red herrings? You don't know all that kind of. I don't know, but. Well, you know, from a writer's standpoint for us and with Harlequin, we know you have to tell your story from start to finish before it even gets approved for you to write. So I wouldn't even be able to turn something in if I didn't know who that killer was. That proposal would never even get approved because it's like, uh, what's the ending? And you know how we, we're kind of, are you ever compelled to write a proposal that seems suspenseful and you're leaving things open so the editors say, oh, I want to know what happened. Let me pick this up. That doesn't fly with Harlequin. They're like, girl, what? what it doesn't happens? fly with anybody as far as right. the proposal. It does <laughs> it. Right. It does. And even though I'm tempted to write it like a blurb, like, oh, and I'm going to, you know, reel them in with this. And they're, they're going to want me to write this book because they're going to be trying to figure out ooh, what, what's going to happen next. It's like, no, ma'am, they need to know here because it, unless you don't want to, if you don't care about getting picked up, fine. But yeah, please let us know here. So, yeah. <laughs> okay. So this is what I was laughing at. Okay. Because this, this is me right here with me and just saying, <laughs> And she said, not Denise, what about these heroines going out in the night into the woods and the hills? Because that's the thing that always drives me nuts, right? I'm like, dude, what are you doing? Or like when I'm watching the Harlequin shows or whatever. I'm yeah. like, seriously, you going to go out there, you know, because you heard this noise by yourself. <laughs> I mean, and I know you have to suspend belief a little bit. Yeah, and of course, there are people who are like that, you know, who do who do things oh, like yeah. that. And there are folks like that. So, yeah. but yes, that's that's interesting that she mentioned that. <laughs> so, how do, well, how, you do know, you, how do you address, you know, the balance of I got to do this for reasons, you mm-hmm. know, for story reasons versus is this black woman really gonna go out? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> so, how do you balance those things? So here's the thing about law enforcement. See, we're not dealing with just regular people. We're dealing with law enforcement. I think law enforcement officers think they're invincible. And their bottom line is they live to solve a case. So their attitude is, I'm going to do what I have to do to solve this case. Um, In Heart Shaped Murders, for example, my character was very defiant. You know, she felt like her family was trying to hold her back and keep her because she'd been attacked in the beginning of the book. So her family, and you know, she's a woman and she's a, the, the rest of the law enforcement officers in her family, they're men. They're trying to hold her back. You know, you can't keep a good woman down, Reese and Sorry. Mia. <laughs> so she's defiantly saying, this is my case to solve. You all are not going to lock me in, in this room thinking I'm not going to try and still go out and get this case solved. So I think a lot of their drive is, you know, these people, we're, a lot of us are driven by our work. Law enforcement officers, their reputation is on the line when it comes down to solving a case that they've been assigned. This is their responsibility. The community is depending on them. They're depending on themselves. So I think when you're driven, because I don't know, in real life, and I think that I have some of that in me, in real life, I will be so driven to accomplish something. I don't really, I'm not like this as much like I used to be in my 20s, but 
I don't really care about repercussions. I'm going to get something done because I'm so determined to do it. And I think that's why I write like that. Because mm. you know? so, I'm, I'm not thinking about, I don't know, I can't speak for Mia, but I'm not thinking about actual detectives. I'm usually thinking like with the cozy right. mysteries, it's usually, you know, Candace Cameron Bray or somebody like right. that. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> it's just, the, it's the librarian, yeah. you know, yeah. or, or the baker. Or <laughs> Allison Swenson, it, it's these. It's, I'm yeah. like, like, dude, no, don't do that. Our, our passion no. sometimes lead us astray. We know yeah. that. I Whether it's right. romance or you know work, whatever the case may be, our passions to get something that we want can oftentimes lead us astray. So, and thank you, Uzu. That is what I was talking about. Midsummer murder. Oh yeah. yeah, I remember that. Yeah, it's, there, it's always a serial killer. There's always at least three people. Or kill on every single one, which which like the shows are amazing. They're good and they're great characters and all that kind mm -hmm. of stuff. But it's just I needed a break. It's the same thing reads yeah. on like um Criminal Minds. Yeah, I loved it at first, but then after a while, it was just overwhelming for me. It was just a lot. So I I, I didn't enjoy being in the head of a, a serial killer every week. So <laughs> it just depends. And yes, Columbo is one of those ones that show you the the killer at the beginning. Mm -hmm. um, Mia, I cannot recommend Motive highly enough. It's not on anymore, but you probably can find it streaming somewhere, like a Hulu or something. That is such a good show. <clears throat> so um, let, me, da, 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 let me just try to make sure I got all the major questions here. So now, let us get to. <laughs> okay, Cheryl says I can't stand when a heroine is reckless just to prove a point. So, and, and like I said, I, again, and the funny thing is, and I love badass heroin. So I'm like, I have to balance that in my head between I love badass heroines. I love them lovely. You give me a story, a movie, whatever, with a badass heroine, I'm there. <laughs> so I do have to kind of to balance the whole thing. So, uh, and it just depends on who they are. Like, like, and, and I think too, the motivation is strong enough. Like right. I remember reading i feel like it was one of yours where um it was the woman was she was in somewhere in you know, they're very heavily invested like if, if you have a reason like it's it's your sorority sister or it's your neighbor or it's your friend or in your accused or somebody else that you love is like, that's a really strong motivation for you to go out and do what you need to do when you see Maybe the authorities are not doing taking it seriously enough. Right, that's a very strong motivation. Yeah. So there definitely are you know reasons and any exceptions that make you say, okay, yeah, yeah, I can understand why this person would go ahead and do this anyway because you know their their family is being threatened in some way or this was their loved one or whatever and nobody else is really uh uh you know caring about it. So that's right. It. Yeah. Okay. So. Let's get to our recommendation. So, um, first of all, let me just say, all the books of yours I got, I can't find a one of them. <laughs> so, I'm looking at everybody I know who I might loan them books to. I want my books back, okay? <laughs> so, Look, I'll send you some more if you need them, Reese. Just let me know. I'm like, I'm like, what happened to my books? I loaned them to somebody, and I cannot figure out where they are. So, because you know, I got books all over my house. So, <laughs> give us a list of either authors or books that we should be reading that are romantic or that are thrillers or uh, romantic suspense. Okay, so you know, I have to start with my intrigues because I love the intrigue line. KD Richards for sure. She's awesome. I love KD. Um, Tyler Ann Snell is really good. So you got, yeah, I got my KD collection too. So, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Yep, I got one more. <laughs> yeah, yeah. KD is great, and KD comes. She's she's really kicking them out with her um, with her West investigations. West investigations, yeah. Yep, series. So yeah, and then she so does her next week about that. Yep. Yep. Her Christmas books are fantastic. So yeah, KD does a great job. Tyler Ann Snell is a great uh, intrigue author. Barbara Hahn is really good. She's a um, great one. Nicole Helm. So there there are a lot of uh, intrigue authors that are fantastic. And I don't know if you know this, Jacqueline Thomas is writing um, Suspense too. Cold yes, case. Yeah. <laughs> I got you. <laughs> yeah. So you see, Jacqueline and I, you know, we talk and she's big on true crimes. So we always have our true crime conversations. She's writing Suspense. Cold Case Deceit comes out at the end of the month. Uh, so that's her second one. Now she's, that's with yeah, uh, that's, that's Cold Case Deceit. Yep. 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 So her, and actually Mia recommended a really good book to me that I'm reading right now. It's called The Writing Retreat. 
And Reese, you would like this one. This one's up your alley. It's by an author. Her name is Julia Bartz. And she's, this is her first novel. Uh, and she's published by Atria. But her book is about two best friends turned enemies who are both writers who want to write novels. They get invited to attend this uh, exclusive writing retreat off in the woods somewhere, this big mansion. And I think the woman hosting it is one of their favorite authors. She's a famous author. So once they get there, they find out that they have to get a novel written in a month. So, so there, there lies this competition, but then the house is haunted. All these strange things start happening and I've started, I'm not done with it yet, but it's really good. So that's, I'm reading that right now. Cause it's I good. think I've seen that recommended somewhere too. Yeah. Okay. Very yeah. cool. Okay. I'm enjoying that one. So I think it's good to kind of also spread your wings and read other things, you know, um, and just in, in writing in general, because it just keeps you sharp, keeps you inspired. You know, I read just a little Mary. Uh, just I love that one. And a Valentine for Christmas. I've got I love that. So yeah. And then Darby, I know Darby's not, I'm not I'm off of suspense now, but Darby writes her special edition. Uh Darby Baham, she's fantastic. She just signed a new contract with them. Her books are great. Yes. Mia, Mia, who's on here, Mia's book Monopoly Love is coming out. I love Mia's books. Mm -hmm. The friendship contract was fantastic. Yeah. So I like to read a lot of different genres just to, to kind of keep me sharp. Yeah. And, keep me on top of things. So um, Marcella Bell is another one too. And you know what? Chandra Blumberg. You know Chandra. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I got one of her books over on my desk over there. <laughs> Stirring Up Love. Just, she's so good. So creative. I got two of them actually. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. I think Digging Up Love was the first one. Stirring Up Love. Um, that's her Taste of Love series. She is an amazing author. Just beautiful writer. Um, again, the creativity just jumps off the page. So I love her too. So I try and like read a lot of different books. Um, and then I'll pull out some old stuff too. Whacked by, um, what is her name? Jules Asner. Do you remember Jules Asner from the E! Channel, E! News Live? She married Steven Soderbergh. He was a host on there. She wrote a book called... You know, I might know the faces, but the names do not yeah. sound familiar. She wrote a book called Whacked. It was, it's romantic suspense years ago. And it is, I've read that book probably three or four times. It's so good. So I'll go back and reread stuff that I enjoy just to get inspiration as well. So you see, I go on and on and on. Reese, you gotta, you gotta stop me. Can... <laughs> and and then for more um, romantic suspense or stuff, um, it's the Atlanta's Finest series by Sharon C. Cooper. Okay. Um, that's a long running uh, series set in Atlanta. And I she just had a new book. Did she just have a new release? I feel like she just had a reset. I think so, yeah. A release in okay. that line. So that's that's awesome. Um, and yeah, I want to read. I know it's not related <laughs> to this, but I actually, that's on my list too, to read The Build Up by Tati. Richardson. Tati, oh that's yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So, but so Sharon C. Cooper and then uh, Deborah Fletcher Mello has... Um, a series of suspense, um, romantic with romantic suspense, Harlequin's like a romantic suspense line about the black family. Their their name, their last name is black. That they're all in like in law enforcement and stuff. And so that's a great series, a um, great series as well. A book that I have and have not got a chance to read yet is Alyssa Cole's. Oh yeah, um, when someone's watching or something yes. like that. It's called that was a great one. I have that and I had it forever and I need to read that. I have not read that one yet. And then I have a ton, like I said, I have a ton of other uh, romantic suspense and stuff. Anna J. Stewart is a friend who who uh, writes, I think Intrigue is what she writes for. So yeah, so there's just so many that you can delve into. Like I said, uh, like we've been talking a lot about Harlequin intrigue yeah. and harlequin romantic suspense yeah. so intrigue is the one where the books are kind of like um more of a bluer tinge but they got the, the purple purple on mm -hmm. the edge and then the romantic suspense suspense ones are more burgundy i don't have one sitting right here but they have like a, a burgundy on the on that little corner or whatever right and those so if, you know that's that's another thing you could pick your flavor if you want more right. of the romance and just you know like less of the mystery or whatever, then and you want a higher heat level and stuff, then that's going to be the romantic suspense. Mm -hmm. line. And then they have love inspired suspense too. And then they have love inspired suspense. Mm -hmm. They sure do. So then you have no sex on the page, no, no, no salty language, none of that. So there's just all these different options, even within Harlequin that you have that you can yeah. um, check out. So, 
Um, so Delise, tell us what is up next for you. Okay, so May 1st, I've got Danger in Nevada Desert coming out. That's book two in the West Coast Crime Story series. So I'm really excited about that. And then this fall, Homicide at Vincent Vineyard, book three in that series. So book two, we get Miles Love's story. Book three, we get Jake Love's story. And that's going to be the end of that series. I'm kind of sad about it. I just uh, turned in my last round of edits for Homicide at Vincent Vineyard. So I really enjoyed writing that one. And then you mentioned my medical romance uh, contract. So that the medical book, my working title is Love in the ER. It's a second chance romance. And it's almost like enemies to lovers the way these characters are carrying on. But I'm writing that now. That one uh, will come out sometime probably in the spring of next year. So I'm looking forward to that. And then I have a project with Christine Lynn, who uh, she's writing for Thule and writing for Harlequin Medical Romance. We're going to do a duet together. Oh, medical. how nice. Yeah. Yeah. So I'll have those things coming out. So. Those collaborative projects are really fun. So yeah. I love that. I am working. The, the book I am working on now is my last um, Harlequin Desire one. It is uh, part of a, a quartet that I'm doing with Jules Bennett. So I'm doing okay. book one, she's doing book two. Okay. I'm doing book three, she's doing book four. So I am working mm -hmm. on book three right now. I'm editing book, the first book. <laughs> and then when I finish yeah. writing that, hopefully later tonight, or okay. first thing in the morning, then I'm gonna go back to writing the uh, final book. Um, okay. So yeah, but that those those are fun for me because like there's a different there's two different kind of joint projects. There's the continuities where they give you the story bible, and of course you can add all your own flair and yeah. you know, all that kind of stuff to it. But projects like this duet that me and Jules are doing now, and then the Moonlight Ridge series that I did with Karen Booth and Joshua, those were my most favorite because we created everything from scratch. You know, it was not about what anybody else wanted, it was a hundred percent. This is us from from top to bottom. Yeah, adding what we wanted it to be. Okay, and so those are the projects that the collab projects that I love the most. But it is it is fun. Even the Texas Cattlemen's Club, once where it's a continuity or whatever, it's fun. You know, collaborating with other other um, authors and stuff. So yeah, uh, those are those are always lots of fun. So. Now, Reese, let me ask you this: What's the continuity or what's the commonality? Do they give you all a town, and then you write two characters, and the other person writes their two? Or are you all writing same characters? How does that work? So for a continuity like um, the Texas Calumet's Club, so you know it's been running forever. Yeah, but they do it in these little mini, these like like six book or so many series. Okay. So for instance, so when they give it to you, there's actually a story Bible that's like, I don't know, it could be 50 to a hundred pages. Okay. And so it for it has like the overall story idea for each book. So basically they give you, they, so they give you the, who the characters are. Okay. You can make some tweaks to them. For instance, my, my book, her, I changed her name to Diana. It was okay. Diana. They had said Diana. And I'm like, nah. Mm -hmm. Her sister's name, name is Diana. Okay. <laughs> so, so just stuff like that. So, so you definitely can change things like that. You can mm -hmm. add other side characters, make things happen as long as it doesn't throw off stuff. But there is a storyline. So it's not just like, oh, they give you this character. Right. It's like, and so they don't tell you everything that happens in the book, but mm -hmm. they might say, okay, these three things need to happen. Okay. So, you know, this here's your main characters. Three, three things have to happen in the story or these five things or whatever have to happen in the story. And then you can do a whole lot of stuff, you know, on, you know, around that. Okay. As long as you don't do stuff like give people babies, you know, or whatever, something that's going to throw right. off the rest of the, the timeline, right? Okay. So you, you can't do anything that's going to throw off the rest of the story. Okay. But as long as you stay within that realm, it's like, okay, yeah, I got, I've got these things. So now are those your characters or will the next person still write? About so, so okay, so with the Texas Cattlemen's Club, for instance, mm -hmm. it's a over. Usually, there's an overarching story. So in okay. the, this one, the wedding, mm -hmm. it's about this wedding. It's usually the, with the other ones, it's, it'll be like a murder mystery or you know a, a bachelor auction or whatever kind of thing might be going okay. on. But then this one is the celebrity wedding that's being planned. So from the that's the what they, the the thread that's going throughout, okay. and then in each story, there's a separate couple. Gotcha. So okay. my so my couple is, you know, yeah. 
of course, my phone's ringing. But <laughs> so the, the story, like, you know, um, you have these things that have to happen. Right. But then after that, you're, you are you can do whatever else that you might want to do. In the okay. Story. okay. And so, yeah. So those are always fun and interesting. And like I said, even if five different people get it, then five, it's going to be five five different stories. Gotcha. Even okay. It's the same things that have to happen. But then, So they don't tell you every single thing. Mm -hmm. It's just you've got to work around these certain things that are okay. happening in the story. Okay. So like I said, but even with that, you know, so I, that's great and it's fun and it, it, it challenges your creativity to make mm -hmm. all these other fun things happen, right? Okay. And you get to collab with other people because I really like to, as much as possible, bring other characters from the series okay. into my story to really, you know, I, I think especially in this one, Secret Era Seduction, I really, really got a chance to do that. Oh. He was a secret heir to a family, so I really brought in other characters that were his siblings and stuff that were going to be the characters in, in other books and, and were the characters in other books in the story. So, okay. But like I said, when, when we do a project where we think of it from start to finish, then everything is is ours. We don't have to work. You don't have to work around anything. You don't have to whatever it's just what you did so yeah that, that's fun and so i definitely want to do more of those going forward because that was that was a lot of fun so yeah yeah so tell people how they can connect with you online okay so i am on instagram denise underscore wheatley underscore writer i'm on twitter under denise wheatley facebook denise wheatley and tiktok I'm Denise underscore Wheatley underscore writer. So, but then I have a link tree in my bio on Instagram. I think on all of my social media. So you'll be able to find me through all of my social media. I've got a blog that's denisenwheatley.com. So I'm actively on there as well. I'm always chatting with readers and so forth. So anytime you want to reach out and say, hi, I'm, I'm always around. I love it. I love it. And I did put Denise's uh, link to her, her Amazon page. So if you're looking for any of her books, you can go right to her Amazon page and get any one of them, or you can go directly to her website, which is also linked in the um, box below. So definitely check that out. Um, and since we run over so late, I'm going to try to wrap us up as quickly as possible. Again, thank you, Denise, so much for coming and joining us. Thank you all for being here and for all of your fantastic questions and your great participation. Y'all make the show. So thank you. Um, next week, like I said, Katie Richards is going to be joining me. We're going to be talking more about that balance between romance and, uh, you know, the thriller and all that, talking about her process, some other things like that. Um, and again, the audio books for A Valentine for Christmas and A Cowboy Kind of Thing are both available now. So if you are an audiobook person, those are both available. If you're local to the Raleigh, North Carolina area, this Friday at 7 p.m., I will be at Quill Ridge Books with Annie Rains, who had a recent release as at the Good Look Cafe, as well as author Nancy Nagel. And we'll be there for a romance, free romance event at Quill Ridge Books, which has really stepped up their game from when last time I was there like 10 years ago. So if you've never, you haven't been to Quill Ridge Books in a while and you're in North Carolina, definitely check them out. So I want to thank all of y'all for being here and for making this an amazing, <laughs> amazing episode. We will see you. I will see you in two weeks on April the 4th at 7 p.m. when my guest is going to be um, Kate Richards. And the show after that on April 18th is going to be Legend of Romance, Shirley Hailstock. So you don't want to miss either one of those. Make sure you hit those reminder buttons and hit the like button on this today's show and subscribe if you haven't subscribed and share the show so that other um, viewers can find us. In the meantime, I hope you got some great uh, recs <laughs> and yeah. if comments that didn't get addressed leave them on the comment page and we'll try to uh, address them as we can you know answer them as we can but thanks again and happy reading take care y'all